to the broadcast with Amanda, Shandy, and Colleen. My name is Colleen. My name is Amanda. And I'm Shandy. Welcome to the show, everybody. This is Season 5, Episode 19, Episode number 199. How's it going? Woo! Woo. Good. It goes. Has everybody week been everybody week been so far? How has everybody every weekend? Yeah. <laughs> is the weekend yet? Can it be the weekend, please? Oh God. <laughs> Only Tuesday? Okay, fine. I know. It was a long day today. Um <laughs> Yeah. How has everyone's week been? Good, good, good. Yeah. good. Well I made it outside today. Can't no. say that about yesterday. I didn't but, make uh, it outside today. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's This is the time of year where like, I don't know if this happens to you guys, but just like the darkness catches me off guard. Yeah. Mm, yeah. That like, it just seems to happen so quickly. I yeah. literally, I, I startled Daniel yesterday because I was so, I myself was so startled by how <laughs> dark it was <laughs> that like I was working and then I look over because our, our windows are, are over over yeah. that, over yonder. Yes. And I was like, ah, and he's like, what? <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, I just wanted to get dark. <laughs> yes. And it was, it was light. Like the, the last time I looked out the window, it just did come, it startled me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I had a thing yesterday. So Zachary gets picked up at four from carpool and um, I had to go to target and I didn't make it there before I got him. So I was like, well, let's just go to Harris Teeter. What if I'm going to target? I can get at Harris Teeter. And then I remembered that we had bought him the um, the Chromebook that we talked about on Broad Topics yesterday. And I needed to go to Target for that. So I was like, well, shit. Okay, forget it. We'll just – we'll get Alex and then we'll go to Target, all of us. And, uh, re- you know, got Alex – came back to the car, realized I had locked us out of the car. Oh, and no. it was cold, and it was like oh, 4.20 no. at that point, and we were locked <laughs> out. So, yes. So, good times. Uh, Jay had gone for a walk. He was at the furthest point from our house. So, even like if he ran back, it would have been about 15 minutes at the quickest to get back. And then he had to drive oh, no. 15 minutes to the house. So, we stayed on the playground, and... Zachary had left his coat in the car and he was wearing short sleeves because previously it hadn't been cold. (laughs) The sun was setting quickly. (laughs) So I ended up giving him my coat and, you know, was just planning on, you know, putting like my sleeves around my arms and then they're like, push us on the swings. And I was like, but then my hands are exposed. (laughs) But it was fine. It was fine. Moving around kept me kind of warm too. But yeah, Yeah. so that, uh, the darkness also came quickly yesterday. (laughs) And then, yeah. that time of year. Yeah, yeah. And then Jay ended up just taking them back and I went to Target myself, which was glorious. And then, you know, uh, it was dark by the time I got out of there. (laughs) Yeah. But anyway, um, I just mentioned the broad topics. We are going to be politics free tonight. Um, unless it comes up naturally, but we're not actively seeking out political talk tonight. Um, if you want to hear anything else that we had to talk about with the election or anything going on, check out Broad Topics number seven, our final one for the year, uh, released right before this on your feed. Um, and I believe we talk about, what do we talk about? Well, we talk about the election. We talk about the, uh, the four seasons, total landscaping debacle. Uh. (laughs) debacle for who yeah debacle for who not us it was a lot of fun for a lot of us Mm -hmm. sure was uh (laughs) what else we talked about covid we talked about uh the minks rising up to get their revenge on us which you'll have to listen to find out and uh, a whole lot of things in between so uh, definitely check that out and next week, we have our uh, 200th episode, so we'll be live. Uh, we hope that you'll join us. It will also be Broads Giving, so come prepared to give your annual What I'm Thankful For This Year spiel that we always do, right? That's always Broads Giving, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, okay, mm-hmm. so come prepared for that, everybody. There's your homework. And yeah. Cool. Happy birthday to uh, Brian, our favorite DP specialist, whose birthday is today as recording this. And happy birthday to Mandy, our favorite Tennessee gal, 
That's uh, right. <laughs> whose yep. birthday is I, tomorrow? T- tomorrow as of recording this, As of right? recording this. Or, yeah, or or two days ago as of releasing this. <laughs> yes, because Do my that. my Nashville pictures started coming up today in my Facebook memories. And I when I was on that trip, I met her, and it happened to be her birthday, and we went to lunch. Oh, fun! I didn't. I, I forgot, forgot that part of the story. That. I remember you yeah. guys went to lunch. Yeah. I didn't. Re- I didn't remember that it was on her yeah. birthday. That is I so know. cool. It was great. Yeah, and all of that thanks to Snapchat, which I don't <laughs> use anymore. But she saw that I was in Nashville because of Snapchat. Oh man, Snapchat! <laughs> there's a blast from the past. Yes, the wonders of the internet. I haven't used Snapchat in like four years. <laughs> Yeah, I finally I like officially deactivated my account because I was like, I don't I don't use this anymore. I don't I don't need this. I'll keep my Twitter handle, but I don't I don't need a Snapchat handle. We're ah, dead. That's a good point. I just don't use them anymore. They just sit there unused on my phone. I'm not oh, even like yeah. tempted to go check it out. But I think like TikTok is the new Snapchat, right? I think so. Yeah, Definitely. that's where all that's where all the youths and trendy people are. Yes, and creative people nowadays, and people that. Mm. <laughs> people that wreck wreck uh, election fraud hotlines <laughs> <laughs> doing the lord's work doing the lord's work i uh, i would never partake in that myself to be honest but it did you know people posting videos of themselves pranking the covid fraud hotline really was a highlight of <laughs> last week Good times. I do believe I missed that. You must have. And some of it I was like, all right, this is kind of overkill. But then I was like, you know what? They can do them. It's not affecting my life. Isn't that the uh, the, the going theory here? If it doesn't affect uh-huh. my life, it's okay? Cool. Okay. Cool. Basically. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry. Politics free show. Uh- <laughs> so I went into work today and I went in at like the very beginning of the day. Like it was... It was odd, um, but we actually like during this during these COVID times, environment moved, and Ooh. so like I had gone in earlier uh, to like box up all my stuff, and then movers like moved it to a new office, and so I had some things to like figure out today. And I went in, and I was like, well, I might as well, you know, unbox everything and like yeah. get sort of. Set up for the day when, you know, I actually do need to come back here um, all the time. And it was nice. It was like, it was cool because nobody was there. So like I felt safe and it was nice to get everything set up. Uh, When I was moving around my printer, though, I don't really know how it happened. But my clutter ring that I got in Ireland, it's Mm. it's somehow broke. Oh, my God. Which, like, as far as I'm concerned, is not really supposed to happen with, like, no. decent gold products. <laughs> do, you, do you have any paperwork from where you bought it from? I don't really think so. I need to look. But, um, I mean, I know the place, and I'm, I was thinking about, like, just calling them and being like, hey. Right. Um, to see, like, what they could do. It was super. So now, I don't know. I feel, my hand feels very naked, and... It's like fucking 2020, that ring started off my year and made me so happy. And now it broke. It's so, it's so weird. It like, and it, yeah. So that was my day. I had to like remind myself that things are just objects and it's okay. That is a fixable. That is a fixable one. Wait, is it, it's fixable? I, I would, I mean, I'm no jeweler, but I do think that it should be fixable. I'm worried that it would. I don't I don't know. Again, not a jeweler. So I don't know if like the integrity of the ring would be forever in question. Um just because of where it broke and how I don't know how you would like and then weld that together. I don't know. But it is like I can fit the pieces together. Right. Well and it's also because it is new that it is questionable as to how it broke in the first place. So yeah. if if they can't fix it, they should at least you know, send me, a, send me a new one. Yeah. <laughs> or at least like, you know, give you a discount on a new one. Like it, 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 there should be some sort of window of like warranty here. Yeah. 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 So anyway, that was my day, but it was, I will say it was nice to, to like walk to work and spend most of the day, like on my feet, like moving around and, and doing stuff. That does sound until, really nice. Yeah. 
Yeah. Till the ring, till the ring, it was all good. But uh, now we'll see for the rest of it. I don't think that I will need to go back for a while, uh, which is which is fine with me. But I was telling Frank like it was kind of nice going in, and honestly, like part of me was like, I w- I would almost rather do that because I felt because nobody else is there, so I felt mm-hmm. safe. But I don't want to give them the impression that I'm just like down to go back right to work and like right, physically right. it's right. because there's the, the caveat of nobody else being there so, right 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 that makes sense yeah that totally makes sense yeah well i'm sorry though that the, about your ring and hopefully it was a fixable definitely a fixable. i know yeah. it's a fucking it's bummer, a bummer. It is a bummer. And it's not again it's not it's not like i spent thousands of dollars on it by any means but it doesn't matter um, not it, even it, not even eight thousand dollars you can get it from a cracker like, bat jack box <laughs> if it meant something to you right. then exactly yeah like went to ireland to get it and it has yeah it just has like sentimental value yeah yeah, yeah. <sighs> so, yeah. anyway sorry that's kind of a bummer um, um but other okay. than that things are great well that's good <laughs> that's um good. Uh, a weird jewelry like story. I have something similar. Um, when Alex, uh, he still likes to do this, but Alex used to love um, in the middle of the night to pull on my necklace, and I had the neck. I have a necklace that has a uh, little um, little uh, pendants with each one of their initials on it, and mm. he yanked it off one day in the middle of the night, mm. and to this day, I have still not found one of the one of the like things just disappeared. Totally. Oh, jeez. Uh huh. But we it was in up, your room. It was in his room, and I was sitting in his oh, like his rocking room? chair. And yeah. I don't. It must. I. I always joke like one day where it's gonna show up, and I'm gonna find it and be like, "How the hell did it get here?" But we ended up getting yeah. like ha- we had it under warranty because thankfully he was a baby. So, and I think it was the A one actually. No, it was the Z. <laughs> it was the Z. It was the Z. Um, but. I know, right? Um, I, I that I also joke. I'm like, well, if we were find the Z again, I'll just say it was for Zoe, and because <laughs> we ended up it, uh, since they were under like warranty, it, it was like from Diamonds Direct. We ended up just paying the like you know, uh, not what's it like the deductible or whatever, just to like get it like replaced. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah. So just, you know, weird jewelry things that, yeah, yeah. it will show up someday. You'll see if you guys ever move or I don't know if you do a big like rearranging of the room or something. Yeah. Cause eventually, you know, it's like Alex will, he'll redo it as he like becomes a, a real gonna, little boy. We're going to redo like, get it. Get a big bed and stuff and you'll find it then. Yeah. We're going to redo it sooner than later, hopefully. We're just waiting for Ikea to be, like, open and safe because he needs a big boy yeah. bed at this point. Um, uh, yeah. Just he, he's, he's ready for, for a, a big boy set up um, <laughs> in general. But, you know, whatever. It, neither here nor there. It was just a, a coda to Shandy's story <laughs> about, <laughs> about weird jewelry things that are bummers. <laughs> yeah. 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 If any listeners are experts in, like – Jewelry. Jewelry piecing together. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I usually just take broken things to the jeweler and just make help. <laughs> See, that's, that's, that's more than I've ever done. But, And that's what we were thinking, too. Like, I'm going to try to call the guy in Ireland because, again, I know exactly what shop it is. It's mm-hmm. the oldest one. Yeah. <laughs> but, Maybe the clattering um, had been there since it started. Yeah, it's, true. Maybe it's, it's new to you but it might be centuries old that might be worse right all right that's like oh no we can't fix that this uh it's one of a kind it's a yeah. Uh. Yeah. well if it yeah if it is i think it's re- i think it's repairable I, I would love for them to do it if not like i would pay for somebody to do it here that's yeah like whatever if it's doable and if it's not, then I guess I'll just turn it into a necklace. Oh, or something yeah, that's else. True. That I'm yeah. Uh, my coworker has repurposed a lot of her jewelry too. Her yeah, mom died true. when she was a baby, so she got a lot of her jewelry from her dad after he passed away. And she was like, "These are all ugly and old fashioned looking." So she just remade <laughs> them into mm-hmm. things that she wears, and they're yeah. actually very pretty. There you go. <laughs> so, that's really smart. Yeah, yeah. Good times. That's really smart. Um, and it just means that I have to go back to Ireland. So there yeah. you go. There you go. Yeah. I think that's the Silver actual line of the story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> First place you're going once we're free to travel again. 
Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, yeah. Well, speaking of non-politics and non-bummer stories. Yes. I have discovered something that brings me so much joy. Uh, we have been watching the new Supermarket Sweep with Leslie Jones. Oh, is it good? It's fun. Oh, my God. I was I was having kind of a rough day today. I was just kind of anxious and worked up over just, you know, a bunch of silly things. And that really, it, it soothed my anxious soul and just put a smile back on my face. Excellent. It is, it is great. Um, is it kid-friendly? It's totally kid friendly. Okay. It's totally kid friendly. It's just, you know, silly. And I think what was what is particularly great about this iteration is like the clear um, intention of inclusivity. Nice. Like we've watched five episodes. And in those five episodes, you have seen every configuration of type of person in America. Like there have been drag queens. There have been you know, gay couples, there have been lesbian couples, there have been, you know, cisgendered people, there have been black people, there have been white people, there have been That's Latinx, awesome. there's been gender nonconforming, like just everybody is represented in in this show. And it's so positive. And Leslie Jones, I could just watch her do just about anything. I think yeah. she is so, so funny. Yeah. And the and the puzzles are really fun to play along at home. Okay, well, now I, I'm very excited to watch it. We we're we're currently doing a very very slow family watch of Great British Bake Off. Not the oh, most recent one. one. That's my other. That's my other go to. Not the most recent one. The one that's previous to that, I believe. I think we're almost okay. cut up. Um, but Zachary's like super into the cakes and whatever. Um, which I know I've been talking about Alex a lot lately. We had a school conference for Zachary today over Google Hangouts. And I was so proud of him. He had to take this assessment test for reading. And I was there when he took it. And honestly, I he was going through it so quickly that I was like, shit, there's no way that he's getting <laughs> all of these right. And she said that he that uh, average is three and it's graded from one to five. And fi- he got a five, which is in the 90th percentile. Oh, and honestly, yes. that is the speed of which he was going through it that I was like, oh my God, there's no way that he's getting these all right. I think he's just taking it just to get it finished with. Cause it was a 30 minute test that was timed. Like you had to get wow. as many done as you could in 30 minutes. And, uh, yeah. So yeah, I was really proud of him. That's oh, awesome. that's great. Good yeah. job, Zach. Yeah. So just a little bragging. Um, nice. Anyway. Yeah. Zach loves the cakes. Supermarket sweeps. I'm all over it. Can't wait to it's check really- it out now. It's pretty. Um, it's pretty fun. Yeah. Well, how could something with as, Leslie Jones as this Great it? British Baking Show? That yeah. is my other, my other really like soothing balm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, I have been watching Veronica Mars. Yes. Give us an update. And I am like, I am about halfway through the second season. <gasps> oh wait! You gotta tell us what you thought about the first, which is like one of my oh, favorite the first seasons. Is great. One of my favorite seasons of all time. I like it better than Lost season one. I love it so Ooh. much. Wow. Mm-hmm. I well okay. I'm 15 episodes into season two. I loved season one. Um, season two gets uh, messy. It's good, but it's messy. There's a lot of new characters introduced. And okay, okay. We'll, yeah, we'll see. And then I see that there's a season three, and then a very short. It's something is is like oddly comforting about watching it because yeah. like things are bad. You always know they're going to be resolved. People get in. You know, characters that you like get in tough situations, mm-hmm. but you know that it's going to get resolved. So it's interesting. You can just like relax and watch the how. And like, <clears throat> I love the technology because that too, there's something fun about like, well, they don't have all the answers at their fingertips, which is kind of like, I mean, also in like Stranger Things, I think one of the things that we all love mm-hmm. about it is that like, you can't, these kids, these crazy kids, they can't just like call their parents because they don't have cell phones. Mm-hmm. So even in running mm-hmm. Mars, if they do have cell phones, flip phones and computers and stuff, there's, there's still like limits uh, to what they can do, which yeah. is kind of fun. So it's um, just, yeah, no, does, I can't, I like, I can't stop watching it. So it's, it's, it's really awesome. fun. Yeah. It's really great. Does season one and two, does it hold up in a 2020 world? Because I haven't done a rewatch probably uh, since the movie was going to come out in 2014. 14 maybe 13 like 
I mean, does it hold up like socially? Well, you just mean? like, is it as awkward as watching certain Friends episodes, or is it something like you can go back and you're like, okay, this is clearly a time capsule? Yeah, I think you can go back and be like, this is a time capsule. There's there's been two things so two storylines with um, with trans people that have both been like pretty cringeworthy, if mm-hmm. not outright one hundred. Like the first one was kind of cringeworthy, but you're kind of like, oh, it's really it is a time capsule. The second one, you're like, it's cringeworthy and it's really bad. And it's also a time capsule. Yeah. Uh, but but like yeah. but that doesn't make it okay. Yeah. Yeah, um, a good boy. yeah. And it is it's funny to see because like actually there was an episode I was watching recently about about um a bunch of kids at the school who are gay and like that was a whole thing about like who was out and who wasn't out. And it was kind of like, wow, like we've actually progressed. Like, I mean, I know that, you know, coming out is still a huge deal, but like not in the same way that it was in that show. Like, right. Mm-hmm. Remember when Perez Hilton used to like out people like, yeah. for fun? Yep. Like that was that mm-hmm. whole era of time. Yeah. That, that, yeah. Where everything was the very special coming out episode. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And there's like some, like she's always cooking for her dad. Like I like their relationship. But I like, know. Hmm. Like really? Like does she always need to be cooking for him? Like he is the parent. But um, so that's a little bit like whatever. I can get past that. Um, there's some things that are sometimes like sexist, but then it's like called out. But right. that yeah. But you can also you can totally see like it's interesting to see how far we've come. Uh, even if we still have work to do, like in like rape culture and victim blaming and stuff like that, mm. just the way that they. Yeah. Talk about some of those storylines or it's interesting to see because you're like, you're like, but why did it like, it, why would people be talking to her like that? You're like, oh yeah, it was like the early 2000s. Right. So they actually would be talking to her like that. Right. But not. I know what you're referring to. You're referring to one of the subplots of the first season where the sheriff is very rude to her when she goes to report something that happens to her. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I wasn't thinking about anything in particular. There's a, I mean, cause there's like a multiple, but that's a yeah. really good one. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. and uh, I believe by the end of season two, you get the payoff of who did that to her. <laughs> it's very rich. No, you get it at the end of season one and it's, and it's like, no, you don't. It's not satisfying. Oh, you think you do, but you don't? Okay, the red herring. Shit, maybe I shouldn't have said that. No, that's fine. It's, it's all good. Okay. It's I, all good. Okay, I won't say anymore. We gotta keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers. But now 15 I, years later. I know. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I love the character of Veronica Mars, and I do need, I am due for a rewatch, so. Uh, yeah, no, she's great. Yeah. There's a lot of really good characters in it. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, the dude from New Girls is in it. Who plays Max? Oh, right oh now. my God, uh, Leo. Uh, Schmidt. Leo. Yeah, he plays. Le- I, yeah, what's so his name? I, Leo. <laughs> Max. I'm like, Leo. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That sounds right. No. Um. He's I hold myself back all the time from like live texting you my reactions because I'm like, no, just save it for the broadcast. But that was one that I meant to. <laughs> then I forget. So, yeah. No, the cast is delightful. They are. It's so fun to see, like, who shows up that you're like, oh, I've seen them and, like, their subsequent work. And here, this is Schmidt. What? Yeah. yeah. There's so many people in that. And somebody yeah. from uh, Gilmore Girls and The Good Place shows up in a later season, too. Not Good Place. Ooh. Not Good Place. Sorry. Oh, that was going to be really fun if it was somebody uh, else from the good place. No, the good, the good wife, and then the good fight or whatever the other one is of it. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, I feel like I got to watch all of it tomorrow, so that way I know what you're talking <laughs> about next week. <laughs> oh, maybe I should start watching too. Where, where can, where are you watching this currently? Hulu. Okay. It's on Hulu. I'm watching a lot of Hulu lately. So thank you, Colleen. I was going to say, are you still on my Hulu? I am. (laughs) I always watch it through Jay's profile. Kick us off at any time because I'm really using it a lot. No problem. I I always watch it through Jay's profile, so I don't even know (laughs) you're watching anything. (laughs) That's also why I figure I do the one on the bottom. I do the one with the numbers. numbers? Because I figured maybe that's the one that you wouldn't use. That's the one I set up for you. (laughs) That's what I figured. See, I knew. I knew that. 
<laughs> okay. I instinctually <laughs> knew that. Because I think the only thing I've watched on it of myself in the last eight months was probably Unsolved Mysteries. So, <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> which I'm assuming wouldn't have affected you <laughs> in your viewing. <laughs> no, no. Cool. Well, good times. Good times. Um, speaking of fun shows, uh, we don't want to do this tonight, but I did see this awesome uh, Twitter thread and it was uh, what Shit's Creek quote do you randomly say out loud? Oh. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're almost done with the last season. Oh, man. I haven't started the last season yet. Okay. Oh, so no spoilers. No spoilers. It's, no. Wrong it's, it's satisfying. That's what but. I hear. My sister uh, yeah. was in town this past weekend. She also said the same thing. She's like, it's really good. And then I tweeted something about one of the storylines mid fifth, uh, the middle of the last season. And uh, somebody responded to me. They were like, keep going. It's just so, so, so good. And I was like, okay, yeah. here we go. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah. We're, yeah. It's we're a good in- example. Of- oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. I was just saying it's a good example of why you should let a show choose its, its mm. when it's going to end. Because yeah. then you can really – it allows the writers to send everybody off in an intentional way. Right. That's a good point. And it's yeah. it's a better viewing experience for it. Oh, Good. I'm very excited. But we so we like I've been rewatching because it's Frank's first watch. Yeah, and we've been we're into season five now. Okay, so very soon we will be starting season six together, and it will be my first time seeing season. Six. Yeah, we so we did the whole rewatch too up until nice. six, and there were episodes from season five that I had completely forgotten about. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Yeah. Just. So it was like kind of a fun, you know, just a fun rediscovery. But there were so many from the first three seasons um, that I remembered. So (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I don't know what that says. Like the the Stevie storyline with the um, with the writer, the uh, reviewer. I had completely forgotten about that. And that's like such a big part of like the musical episode, like where she gets to. And like I had totally forgotten about that. So, yeah. yeah. I well, I forgot that that storyline played such a big part of the musical episode. Good, the the place that she's in emotionally because they'd broken up like the episode before. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. I guess so. I forgot that there was a musical episode. So this oh, is not me. Very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> not me. <laughs> I am a sucker for a musical episode. <laughs> yeah. Um. One more thing in Feel Good TV. I cannot recommend Ted Lasso enough. It's on uh, Apple TV. It I have even heard of that. It's with Jason Sudeikis um, and Hannah Waddington, who plays the um, – on Sex Education, she's the white lesbian mom who, like, pushes him to, like, be an athlete. <gasps> Yeah, oh, okay. mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So she's the like co-star of it, and it's just it's so fantastic. Um, we re- so Jay watched it, then he rewatched it with me, and then we both rewatched it with my dad and my sister this past weekend. <laughs> and my sister put it very aptly. She goes, "This is just as feel good as like a Parks and Rec episode." Hmm. where it just like at the end of every episode even when they're supposed to be drama it's still done in a way where you're like oh they're gonna be okay like it just i don't know it's just it's just it's a great like i cannot speak highly enough of it it's it's also very like um it's very woke and it's very like social justice heavy but not hit you over the head with it. So somebody like my dad could watch mm. it mm. and not really quite under, like not really yeah, feel uncomfortable. Slide it in there. Yeah. Not feel uncomfortable with like, uh, you know, somebody making an imperialism joke, like being like thrown at him or, um, you know, you know what I mean? Like just, mm. uh, in general. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a, I can honestly like, you know, even though, you know, it's, you know, a, somewhat male heavy the female characters are wonderful too they're very much the like moral backbone of it well actually ted lasso is the moral backbone of the show it's just i can't recommend it enough i think that you guys would also really love it so okay. um get you know yourself if it's on an, anything else i it's not because it's only the first season that just came out if you can get a mm-hmm. uh i think if you have an apple tv you get a year free for like fun 
because we didn't subscribe to it or anything. It's just there. It just showed up one day. Yeah, if same. You, we have we have a free account from for something. I, I think I, don't it, I why. think they gave it I for free. If you, for yeah, if you yeah. buy any new product or something new, maybe that's Apple product. yeah, maybe that's what it was. Daniel bought a new phone this year, so maybe that's maybe. I I just know because we have the Apple TV. It like showed up one day, and we were like, "Yay, cool!" <laughs> yeah. I actually need to buy a new phone, so maybe that will buy us another year Ooh. of Apple Plus. But if, if you can find it anywhere, Shandy, I truly recommend it. I think you will genuinely enjoy it. It's just, it's just really feel good, and like this, the the journey that he goes through, it everything is just very relatable, and it's just. It's even, even, you know, I, it, I can't speak highly of enough. It, like, people are going to put it as number one of their best TV shows of the year, and it totally deserves to be there. Oh, that's nice. great. That's yeah. great. We just need feel-good stuff right yeah, now. Yeah, it's, it's yes, so feel-good. Yeah. 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 And it's not um, Pollyanna feel-good. It's, like, real feel-good. So, okay. Yeah. And side note, since you mentioned um, Parks and Rec, also tie in back to Veronica Mars, Adam Cl- uh yeah, uh, Adam, Adam Klein. Oh, yeah, Adam, Adam, Scott. Scott. Adam Scott. Adam Klein, that's something. Is he in Veronica Mars? He is in Veronica no Mars. No way! Shows up everywhere. Yeah. Oh, you my You can make, God. like, a TV show, like, yeah. guest star thing. It's, like, seven and, degrees of Kevin Bacon. It's, like, right. seven, degree, seven shows of Adam Scott. And so he's also in The Good Place. So yep. there you go. There mm-hmm. is another good See, person in there. He's everywhere. He's just like, I did not realize that he gave an interview talking about how he ended up on The Good Place. So the creator of Parks and Rec created The Good Place and called him up and was like, "Yo, you want to play a bad char- a bad guy character so you can do like, something like totally different?" And he was like, "Sure." <laughs> That's basically how it went. <laughs> nice. Yes. Nice. Good times. Um, nice. Okay, I got to I got to do a rewatch. Is he is he a, a a student or an adult? Don't tell me. He's an adult. He's okay. an adult. Okay. okay. It's a fair question. <laughs> <laughs> well, 15 years ago, I don't know how old Adam Scott was. So. <laughs> right. I don't know how old he is now. That's very true. Well, I think he I has mean, grown I'm, up kids, though, like like high school, college kids, I think. Yes. But like Veronica Mars is a plays a high schooler now. Well, how old is what's her name? Kristen, Kristen Bell. Bell is uh, around our age. much older than us. Yeah, she's uh, Kristen Bell. Let's see. She might so be it just wasn't, shy of 40? It's not outrageous. She's 40. She's 40. And, well, yeah. So she, I mean, yeah. She was like 10 years older than a high school student when she was playing a high school student. So again, fair question. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now that we've got that sorted out. Yes. <laughs> Although she looks, she looks like a good 10 years younger between season one and season two because hmm. of the hair. Because um, of what? Because of the hair. Oh, yes. Because she's got that very, sh- like, short 90s cut, like, slick yes. and straight. Yeah, she does. Oh, that was a, that was a look. Yeah. <laughs> but it looked great on her. Two, her hair's great. But... Yeah. <laughs> but it really did make her look very young, which was fitting for the, for the part. Because plus she's supposed to be, like, a sophomore? Mm, a junior? A junior. Because I think she goes to college by season okay. three. No. No wait, because yeah. the, the event. Oh, no, now I don't know. Go, it's no, prom. No, she's the, in her sen- she's in her senior year in in season two. Yeah, so. I, I say whenever we're all done with Shit's Creek season five, we should revisit this thread, or I could just say some of them now, because why not? Uh, let's see, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Uh, I frequently say this quote when someone schedules a Zoom call before 9 a.m. I let very few people see me before 9 a.m. <laughs> Just watch that episode. <laughs> Door open? Door closed. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Door <don't> closed. <laughs> it's when they're staying at Patrick's house and uh, he's living with the dude that's on the council and the realtor. Right. Oh, right. And he right. wants to, like, make him, like, breakfast and whatnot. <laughs> oh my god all the side characters on that show are just so great like everybody is so good i know i love the progression of ronnie being like more of a main character and bob being more of a main character yeah <laughs> yeah yep uh pretty much i feel this pretty much daily uh i'm feeling like this deep aching sense of dread <laughs> <laughs> yeah. david quote yeah i think that's all of us right now <laughs> 
Uh, let's see. Uh, my husband and I say bebe all the time. <laughs> <laughs> the babysitting episode is so funny <laughs> uh, another one uh, from Moira uh, has our quarantine been lifted <laughs> oh that's timely that is timely but you have to say it in the Moira voice I know, know. which is hard to do it's really hard <laughs> Oh, God, I'd kill for a good coma right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, the writing is so good. It's so good. Okay, this next it's one so is good. this next one is my sister-in-law Heather's favorite scene and uh, line. Uh, you just fold it in. Fold the cheese. <laughs> you just fold it in. <laughs> How do I fold the cheese? David, you just fold it in. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm a little bit Alexis. I'm a little bit la 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 Alexis. <laughs> oh, right. The musical episode. <laughs> Um, Actually, that was bef- that was before, right? That was like her audition. Yeah, that was her audition for the musical. That was her audition. Yeah. And she dances so terribly. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's so Such hard to be song. that bad. I know. She's <laughs> so good. She is so good. And then, of course, there's, you know, your variety of uh, warmest regards. Ew, David. Best wishes. Um, ooh, burn, David. Uh, love that journey for you or love that for you (laughs) oh my god yeah which I had forgotten that the uh, I actually have a magnet with that quote but the love that journey for me and it's from the very first episode where uh, Alexis is going to go to her first like uh, like you know rural hick party and she's like love that journey for me (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, it goes on such a journey like where the show starts yeah, in the first I season know. and where they end up is like it's light years apart i know and then of course there's to finish this off probably one of the funniest scenes in the whole show david don't be a disgruntled pelican <laughs> <laughs> or stop acting like a disgruntled pelican that's when <laughs> they walk in on him and the dude that uh, he and Stevie are both dating. Spoiler alert. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, good times. All right. Uh, something else real quick before we get into feedback. We can do a quiz. Are you a Lunchable or a charcuterie board? Uh, or okay. we have married people are sharing the funniest things their partners have done in their sleep. And they are pretty funny as well. I don't know. Let's see how fast we get through the charcuterie board. Yeah. I like me All a right. food quiz. I kind of knew it. Okay. How would you describe yourself? Oh, oh, actually, wait. Hold on. Let me just give you guys the link, as I always do. I'll put it in the chat. All right. I will Good also put this quiz in the Set. show notes, people. How would you describe yourself? Confident, genuine, chill, fun, ambitious, or compassionate? I'm going to go with compassionate. Hmm. I'm going to go with genuine. Respect that. I guess that. I'll go with confident. I respect that, too. Uh, next up. Are you more of an introvert or, introvert or an extrovert? Introvert, extrovert, ambivalent, or neither? Ambivert. <laughs> I'll go ambivert. Ambivert. Thank I you. am an introvert with extroverted tendencies. Fair. Fair. That's what Jay is, too. I'm going to go with extrovert. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> I think I am an ambivert, but I think I lean more introvert. So I'll go with introvert for this for the sake of the quiz. All right, we've all put different things so far. Pick a ba- exactly. That's why I didn't want to like I didn't want to mess with that. True. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, pick a vacation destination. Oh gosh, this is an oldie but a goodie on every quiz we take here. Uh, Paris, <laughs> Iceland, <laughs> Paris, Iceland, Tokyo, London, Vegas, or staycation. Ooh, this is tough. I'm going to go to Iceland. I kind of do too, but for the sake of the quiz, I... 
I'm going to snake the quiz. <laughs> I'll let you pick Amanda because you you did you fell on the sword last last one. <laughs> yeah, I really love the um, unicorn floaty that goes along uh, yeah. with the staycation, but I don't think that's a good enough reason to stay home. <laughs> um. <laughs> that's just a <to> stay. <laughs> yeah, that's just I just am more like, can I have that? <laughs> I'm going to go with Paris because I've never been before and I feel like that's one of those cities that one should see before nice. before their time nice. on this earth expires. Nice. I was torn between London and Tokyo because, I don't know, those were the ones that appealed to me that were left. But I'm going to go to Tokyo because I've never been there. And mm-hmm. I can get sushi and I like sushi, so there we go. Um, nice. What is your current relationship status? Uh, guys, here we go. <laughs> Amanda, you're going to have to pick casually dating, but nothing serious for the sake of the quiz. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. I'll, I'll take that one. No, everybody do what's real. Single being, being relationship. The, non-ma- the non-married. I think that makes the most sense for me. No, you're in a relationship. We got single in a relationship. It's complicated and casually dating, but nothing serious. Which, why is that not a Facebook status? Because... I don't know. That seems like everybody that is just casually dating goes with single or it's complicated. Just saying Facebook. Yeah. No, that's right. true. Be better. Well, it's like it's complicated. It's kind of BS in my opinion. It's just yeah. like it's like you you're asking people to ask. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you know? It's like, oh no, don't ask me about my complicated relationship. But, uh, <laughs> it's just really complicated, you know, because I'm just like a really dark and intense person and it's very interesting. It's just like nobody cares. <laughs> nobody cares. <laughs> okay. Stepping off soapbox. All now. right. We are we're all going with this is the one we're all agreeing on. Okay. Next. Which looks the tastiest? Mac and cheese. Uh Lumpia. Did I pronounce that right? I believe it's lumpia. Lumpia. Lumpia? Yeah, I lumpia. think it's lumpia. Yeah. Lumpia. 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 Uh, margarita pizza, quesadilla, burger and fries, and pad thai. Ooh. Ooh, I'm, that's tough. I know. It's really tough. Because it depends on the mood. Exactly. I, I'm, I want to do pad thai. Can I have? Can I shotgun pad thai? You can you have can pad thai. Shotgun pad okay. thai. Thank you. I'm going to take quesadilla because it's not always going to be my answer, but right now in this moment, that – that really looks amazing. Looks <laughs> like a really good case. Yeah, it really, it really does. Damn. Okay, I was kind of Sorry. hoping someone would do pizza or mac and cheese because oh, now wait, that we ruled pizza out and quesadilla and, and had pie, that was also. Yeah. Oh, that's tough. I think I gotta go with. I think I gotta go with pizza. Okay, pizza's always good. Okay, but you're yeah, like what in the looks- moment that that feels right. Yes, but because it's what looks the tastiest, so we can just justify it as what looks the tastiest in the moment. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Do you need me to switch? I can switch the burger. It's fine. No, no. We're good here. Okay. Uh, what is your biggest pet peeve? Not using turn signals, signals loud mm-hmm. chewing, being talked over. Ooh, sorry, guys. Um, pen clicking. <laughs> <laughs> People talking to you while you have headphones on. Also, sorry. Or mansplaining. <laughs> this one was made for Oh, my God. <laughs> How awful would that be? Like, uh, people talking over me is my biggest pet peeve. <laughs> Offense taken. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with loud chewing. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. That's been like a real, even just oh. any kind of chewing. It doesn't even have to be loud. Just chewing. <laughs> I, I, I also, can't handle it. I also really hate loud chewing. That would have been my number one. Because you know, well, would you, you like it? You can't pick the same. No, I can the, do it with geez. pen clicking. For the pen sake clicking. of the quiz, no, pen I can clicking, pick a different one. There's clicking. a lot of those irritants that affect me on, no. on the list. I can pick something else. Nope. Believe it or not, pen clicking also annoys me just as fucking much hmm. and more than being talked over or mansplaining. So, <laughs> really. All right, and then I'll go with mansplaining. All right, there we go. So there we go. Um, pick a beverage. Iced coffee, smoothie, mimosa, sparkling cider. Clearly mimosa. mimosa. <laughs> all right. We're all going. <laughs> or two of us are. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. Co- iced coffee is also very delicious. It is. But I, spoke, and that one I, I gotta good. go with you. Okay. It does. But I got I got to go with mimosa. Come on. It's brunch. actually, it is brunch. Smoothie does look really good though. Like appealing right now. 
Mm. Well, this is a right now. I mean, you could be a lunchable. Look, you could be a lunchable on the bed and a charcuterie board on the street. I mean, we don't know. Let's find out. I'm going to go rogue. I'm going to go smoothie. I'm sticking with mimosa. Nice. Yeah, I'm sticking with mimosa. I'm still me. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Finally, how do you feel about brunch? It's a must. It's pretty good, but not my fave. It's fine. It's overrated. It's a must. Yeah. I was going to say it's fine. I mean, it's breakfast. Yeah. I love breakfast. I love breakfast food the most, which is why I would say it was the most. But I yeah. also like happy hour. So I guess I'll just say pretty good, but not my fave for the sake of the quiz. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah, honestly, I don't go out to brunch that much. I just have oh. breakfast at home. Right. I just dream about brunch. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. I just... You can keep your $20 avocado toast. I will make it at home. <laughs> True that. True that. All right. What did you guys get? Lunchable. Charcuterie. Charcuterie, too. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if the smoothie did me over. It might have. It might have. It may have. Hmm. Apparently, I'm naturally yeah. optimistic and easygoing. Well, that's doesn't true. take much to make me happy. I that's enjoy true. simple things like Lunchables. <laughs> <laughs> I said good food, quality time with friends, and afternoon nap. Ooh. Amanda, right. do you want to read the charcuterie one? I won't talk over you, I promise. <laughs> it's okay. As long as you're not chewing loudly, we're fine. <laughs> There's you're a, a fancy charcuterie board. You like to live a little bit on the lavish side. This doesn't mean you're materialistic. Just You just value self-care, whether it's taking a simple bubble bath or treating yourself to your favorite takeout. You know your worth and refuse to settle for less than you deserve. I would say Damn that, straight. yeah. <laughs> Doesn't quite Buzzfeed accurately. called me just... fancy. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to call this episode Lunchable in the Street, Charcuterie in the Bed. Or Do maybe, it. no, it would be backwards, right? It would be Charcuterie in the Street, Lunchable in the Bed. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that tracks. <laughs> okay, that was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, in the was, sheets, in the sheets, in the sheets. Shit. Yeah. In the Wait. sheets. Wait, what's the phrase? Lady in the sheets and a freak in the bed? No, it's lady in the no, streets. It's lady in the str- streets. Yeah, lady streets, in the streets in the and a freak in the bed. Huh? I thought it, I thought there was something with sheets though to rhyme with streets. No, but I see. Yes. Okay. No, the, your reference is solid. Yeah. You know, charcuterie in the yeah. front. It might be a different. Lunchable in the back. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, no, I feel like the expression comes up in pop culture. Maybe. Also with the rhyme. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> what would I know? I am apparently a simpleton. <laughs> no, you're, oh. you're happy and you are, you don't need the fine things in life. <laughs> Yep. You just want some questionable lunch meat. (laughs) Shandy, I love this for you. I love this journey for you. (laughs) People are going to look at this title and definitely know that we're not talking about politics this episode. Um. (laughs) Yeah, very true. All right, next week, next week or two weeks, I don't know, sometimes in the future, we're going to do this uh, funny thing spouses have done in their sleep thing because it is pretty funny. We also have college roommate horror stories, not like ghost stories, but just like, you know, shitty things that roommates did. (laughs) Yeah, you know, yeah. All right, uh, on that note, we're taking a quick break. We're going to come back and we're going to do some feedback. Be right back. All right, we are back, and we are ready to get into some facey back. Let's see. Randy said, Alex, viva, uh, vive la rev- You say it, Shandy. <laughs> vive la revolution. <laughs> I'm sorry. I laughed over you one more time. <laughs> vive la revolution. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Alex is very much that. Um and I'm going to guess that's my story last week about Alex's um, glass glass cut hand and and whatnot, which we have more story. There's another follow up story about that in the broadcast bonus episode. So if you are a patron, check that out. 
the broadcast. No, wait. <laughs> and if you want to be a patron, patreon.com slash Jack. <laughs> That's the one. That's the one. And then that said, I checked out the first three episodes of A Teacher on Hulu based on the film of the same name, adapted for TV by its director, Hannah Fidel. Uh, it follows a teacher who begins having sex with one of her students. It's a compelling look at these abusive relationships, looking to demystify it for those who may react to a teen having sex with his teacher with a, eh, hey, hey, up top. Uh, no, it's not <laughs> cool. It's abuse, just like it would be with genders reversed. The ep- episodes are also short, 20 minute, twenty something minutes each. I'd never even heard of that. I've seen, again, because I've just been watching a lot of Hulu lately, I, I've seen it, like, pop up on the, like, the carousel. Oh. But. Yeah. I, same. Yeah, I didn't I know saw it come up and it. I, I was like, nope. <laughs> Pass. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's uh, the the Mara sister that was in um, Girl oh God, Dragon Tattoo, uh, or no, the other one that was in uh, Kevin Spacey show. What was it called? Yes, thank you. I, I was one, like the Kevin Spacey show. What was that called? Kate Mara. Kate Mara. House of Cards. House of Cards. Yes, yes. Long way around. We got there. We got there. We did. Love this journey for us. Um. Yeah, love this journey. Oh, speaking of long way around, a little bit of a side note here, but I'm finally starting to watch the uh, Jodie Whittaker seasons of Doctor Who. Ooh. So the first female doctor. Yeah. Finally started them over this weekend. I'm years behind. I realize this. But I, I, so far, I'm digging it. I, I think she's a really, she's a good choice and I, I'm excited to keep watching. That's awesome. So for all you Whovians out there. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, with that, I guess it's time to get into some That's What She Said. Uh, I'm just going to take it right now. This time, we got both. She hasn't had a single poll that had her anywhere. Wait, what? Oh, Susan Collins. Hold on. Let me start this again. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> She hadn't had a single poll that heard, had her anywhere close since July. Hashtag homophones. <laughs> I was so enthralled by it the other night when I was going through it. I went to our windows and I could hear people outside cheering. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. The best kind of cheering. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. <laughs> Uh, I had started on the right, but didn't finish. Mm. Should have moved to the mm. left. Should have moved to the left. Might have been a sweeter well, spot. <laughs> did you quickly move it to the left side? <laughs> <laughs> I up top. <laughs> yeah, hey, hey, up top. Hey, hey up top. <laughs> Get it in the morning. Get it in the evening. So good. Lunch so good. <laughs> charcuterie in the street, lunch bowl in the bed. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> Eight twenty six is when I saw it. We all went through it together. Yeah, we did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I couldn't stop myself. Are we in? <laughs> I didn't have it pulled up anywhere. <laughs> I did not go for that personally. I knew it was going to be on there at some point. I'm going to give it to you and you're going to tell me what it is. I can do this too. She can do it. So can I. <laughs> It's very long, but it's good. Which is a definitely something to hang your hat on. <laughs> hi By the way, when I said it's very long, but it's good, I was imagining Jocelyn from Schitt's Creek saying it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Another very underrated character. <laughs> She's pretty great. Yeah. She is so good. All right, we've got one email this week, and it is an Andy update, so let's get to that. (laughs) All right, Andy writes in, this week in Andy's social distancing, hey, broads, 
I'm glad my news didn't wind up raining on your parade over Trump losing. I didn't want it to be like everyone was celebrating. I was whining because in whiny voice, the girl I like doesn't like me back. Wah. Obviously, I will take this win and we'll just have to see where my personal life goes. I guess the thing that struck me is that this twinge of sadness that I had learning Alice wasn't single was the first time I'd had that feeling in a while. We all know I've gotten rejected a lot of times, but it didn't bother me when a random woman who caught my eye didn't respond or quickly fall off, uh, fell off my radar. I know a bit about Alice and I felt there might've been a connection could have been more than a friendship. That isn't the case now. And I'm leaving it be, but it has come up in my thoughts a lot in the past week and a half. I don't think I told you this part, but a few months ago, I saw Alice had a profile set up on a dating site I used. For a long time, I contemplated swiping right, but I couldn't bring myself to do it. I'm sure you remember that one time when we grabbed a drink and talked for a while as friends. Certainly, I respected her wishes, but I couldn't help but worry as I was looking at her profile a few months ago if I did make my interest clear that she would take that the friendly drink we had and the chats we had were just me trying to sleep with her. Maybe I was overthinking it, and maybe I was afraid my awkwardness broaching the subject would be taken in the worst possible way. I guess it doesn't matter now. All of this leads to an issue I've been talking with my therapist about a lot lately, doubt. I have doubted myself for as long as I can remember. Whether it be with my love life, my career prospects, or other major life decisions, to even basic stuff like me wondering if I properly locked the door. It's not OCD because I know that's a lot harder to deal with, but my doubts are a major player in how I live my life. I'm constantly second guessing myself in my life, and I know it's a big problem. It's a big reason why so many things in my life are stagnant. I may be opening up a whole can of worms with my history, taking big chances and failing miserably, so maybe I'll just leave it at this. I'm aware of it at least. You know, I always wanted to tell you some good news. But after all this time, I still haven't gotten close. Arrested Development, the hip hop group, not the show, recorded their first album in the same length of time I've been writing in. And I haven't even gotten to tell a prospective partner that I'm still a virgin. I was hoping to have some kind of story after all this time, whether she sympathizes with me or runs out of the room, leaving a her shaped hole in the wall like an old cartoon. Well, it doesn't look like there will be a big update for your 200th show, but that's how it goes. The big moments don't necessarily coincide with our milestones in life. Life doesn't work like a story does, and while that can be frustrating, that's also a sign of hope. Who knows who I'll meet at some random point down the line, especially when we can get back to normal. And maybe someday we can all hear the news we've all been waiting to hear and get out in the streets and celebrate like when Trump lost. Hashtag I'm six feet from hers, Andy. Hmm. Yeah, I relate to that. I really do, Andy. I think self-doubt is is a big one. And I think it's it's something that a lot of people struggle with. Um, so you're certainly not alone there. But it's it's tough. And I don't think I have any solutions. It's something that I deal with on a regular basis, too. It's, yeah. it's just you keep pushing that boulder up the hill. Yeah. I was going to say, I wish I had some, some sort of insight to give, but uh, clearly I don't either. Um, but I think that it's good that you are seeing a therapist and talking to your therapist about it. Cause maybe that would be maybe the only thing I could, would know to suggest. You yeah. know, Andy, you really do inspire me. I think that it is actually really great that you, you know, talk to a therapist about these things. You still actively are, are, or you're still on the dating sites. Um, You have this, you have this perspective that is just, you know, for a man in 2020, it's really wonderful actually. Um, Mm -hmm. To be honest, like you have this wonderful way of phrasing things and putting it together. And, you know, I, I, I really like that you have this way that you can recognize that while simultaneously you're disappointed and upset about something and your experience is totally and completely valid, um, that you have this way of framing it. Like life doesn't work like a story. And while that can be frustrating, that's also a sign of hope. And to me, like that is just 
you're a really inspiring person like in my life every week with the even with the updates that you give us, even though there might not be the ones that you want to, you always have this profound way of saying things. And, you know, it is my sincere and true, honest hope and wish for you as somebody as a friend after all these emails that, you know, you get the end of the story that you want. And I have to believe as a universe person that you will someday. You're here. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I, I saw something, some meme, I think it was last week, and I'm probably going to butcher it terribly. Um, but it was it was sort of listing all these various people who did things very late in life. And I think um, Kamala Harris was one of them. It's like she met the love of her life at 50. Oh. Um, Abraham he, Lincoln ran for president how many times? Exactly. Uh, you know, it's like how many times Joe Biden ran for president and now finally is getting there when he's in his 70s. And, Ooh, and, and as a side note to that, he was officially, the race was officially called for him on what, the 38th anniversary of the day that he was elected yeah. to Congress mm-hmm. for the first time, which is just yep. super cool. Yeah. Almost and worth just, a week of heartburn for the rest of us. Almost. Yeah. Almost. Almost. <laughs> yes. Yes. But it, my, my ultimate point being. Sorry. And, and what like the point of this meme was, was that like for anyone that needed to hear that this feeling that you are failing because you're not doing something at a certain age is just an illusion and something that is holding you back because you sort of never, everyone's life is unique. Everyone's mm-hmm. journey is unique and you don't know what's behind the next bend and around the next corner. So, you know, I, I think you just have to keep, Moving forward it, with the positivity and the brave, the bravery that you show in every single email you send us. And you'll get there someday. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just sorry it's taking, you know, it's frustrating now. Yeah. Yeah. On a subject that I believe Andy would be very cheered to hear, uh, Ben Shapiro got owned by some British journalist uh, over the weekend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tell us more. <laughs> So uh, I believe he was asking him, you know, the the regular things. And honestly, like I saw this clip going around uh, yesterday or the day before, and I swear to God, I had seen it before. And maybe I maybe it was old, and I was just reseeing it now. But it still made me just as happy. Um, hold, please. Uh, let me see if I can find it and play it. <laughs> so essentially, did you retweet it? No, I did not. <laughs> did you save it to your desktop? Uh, no, I did not because I had thought I'd seen it before. Uh, another thing, uh, Ben Shapiro has also been having like this complete meltdown over Harry Styles um, in a dress. Yeah, he just was like, bring back masculinity. And the whole internet was like... <laughs> <laughs> nope, you do not go after Harry Styles. <laughs> Pretty much. So the tweet was uh, left. Hey, look how important and magical it is that Harry Styles is wearing a dress. He's subversively underlining masculinity. Right. Yes, men wearing dresses does undermine masculinity. And that's bad. Left. How dare you say wearing dresses, all caps. Men wearing dresses undermines masculinity. So essentially, you know, Ben Shapiro not reading the room right at all. As always, uh, I know he doubled down, blah, 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 blah. Uh, masculinity and femininity exist. Outward indicators of masculinity. And this, oh, wait, I'm sorry. Let me do my venture here voice. Masculinity and femininity exist. Outward <laughs> indicators of masculinity and femininity exist in nearly every human culture. Boys are taught to be more masculine in virtually every human culture because the role of men is not always the same as the role of women. The left knows this, of course. The point... <laughs> <laughs> I'm crying with <myself. laughs> The left knows this, of course. The point of Styles doing this photo shoot is to feminize masculinity. Otherwise, why would it be headline worthy for Styles to don't address? <laughs> Good job, guy. <laughs> this otherwise other than to say uh andy i hope that my ben shapiro voice did you proud and (laughs) he also sucks (laughs) 
<laughs> um <laughs> yeah that wasn't what i was going for at first but that's where we got that was a journey that i also loved for myself because now i know i can <laughs> yeah, i was into it <laughs> here for it <laughs> yeah we're just gonna leave it at that um on that note everybody <laughs> <laughs> We hope you will join us live for our 200th episode next week. Uh, we will we'll do it over Zoom. Do you guys want to do it over Zoom still? I know we promised that. Yeah. Okay. We'll do it over Zoom um, for anybody that wants to like watch in person. And I will actually also simultaneously uh, stream it publicly, the Zoom call publicly over YouTube. So if you don't feel comfortable with that, um, I'll send out... I don't actually, I don't know what the link would be for the YouTube because it creates it when we start streaming. But if you're, I might have to share it. I might have to share it after we make it live. Yeah, I might have to share it if we make it live. Um, But if you're subscribed to our channel, like on YouTube, it will, you know, show you Mm. when we're live. Um, But I'll do both. But we hope that you'll join us uh, for the um, for the live show on. Uh, live 200th episode we will use the same broad topics link i feel like that's just our now like you know in general broadcast (laughs) link that everybody has access to and saved in their browser somewhere so it'll be the same link as the broad topics Uh, but we hope that you will join us um i don't know dress up it's our 200th okay like wear your best pearls or something um (laughs) <laughs> or your clatter rings or whatever it is. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, oh, too soon. Oh, too soon. I'm too sorry. Soon. I'm sorry. Bring your charcuterie okay. boards. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. No, we hope you join us, though, because I think that will be fun. <sighs> I can't believe that we have 200 episodes down. And I also can't believe that I remember most of them, which seems sort of crazy to me. Um, Doesn't seem crazy to me. I feel like you remember everything. I feel like I remember the dates that they all came out. Like, if you gave me a title, I'd be like, oh, yeah, this was, fil- this was like, you know, August 22nd, uh, 2017, which I believe was right around the time that we did have one of our best endings of ever- any episode ever, the one with all the Doom porn. Uh, that See, was the- you just proved my point. You remember everything. <laughs> <laughs> Still trapped that mind. Do you remember that, though? That was like the uh, hashtag I'm with hers. And it was uh, with the and I was like, hashtag I'm in hers. And uh, anyway. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> no, nope, but that sounds really funny. <laughs> yeah. And the best part is I was I was pregnant with Alex. So I was totally sober when I thought of that. Thank you very much, beautiful <laughs> mind of mine. <laughs> I'm just that funny in real life. <laughs> Look, Dennis commented in the Facebook group that if we wanted to win awards, we should submit that last like 10 minutes of that episode because it was just perfect. And you know something, Dennis? I agree. That was high praise. Anyway, mm-hmm. um, I don't know. Maybe we reflect back on 200 episodes, but we're also, again going to talk about what we're thankful for as we do every year for broads giving uh, there will be no pre-gravy debate this year uh no. amanda are you making gravy or pre-gravy <laughs> it's unclear it's unclear <laughs> fantastic um so that means we have a clean slate of episode titles for this week and next week awesome um <laughs> So, yes, join us. Come to our broad Zoom table next week. 200, Broads Giving. Always a great show. Always a really fun episode that I enjoy doing. Um, Mm. Our December schedule is a bit up in the air right now just because nobody knows what their travel plans will be because of COVID. But we will clearly uh, most likely take off at least one or two weeks at the end of the year because we will have our annual bloopers show. Hooray! Yes. So, really excited about that. Been pulling a lot of ums for my um model, my um <laughs> montage that I want to do. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so excited! I yes, kind of am too. So good. <laughs> it's gonna be like 60 seconds of um, um, Love um, um, no. um. <laughs> Set it to music. Set it to music. Yeah. Auto tune it. Oh shit! 
I don't know how to, but I'm sure Jay does. So I'll figure I'm it out. I'm sure Jay does. Yeah. I'm sure it's just like a setting that he's going to be like, dumbass, click this. And I'm going to be like, awesome. Much like the thumbtack that you couldn't find for me. Hashtag check out the bonus show. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of bonus shows, uh, thank you to the patrons. We appreciate your support as always. We appreciate our listeners just in general, like listening and supporting us. Um, thank you so much. Um, if you'd like to become a patron, you go to patreon.com slash Jack. You can go to janejack.com and click on the become a patron link in the top right hand corner of the page. Um, a special thank you to the patrons that contribute a certain level, and that would be Tack, formerly of Tokyo, Eckhart Rickner, Maggie the Magnificent, Joanne with a plan. Uh, <laughs> I know I crack myself up. <laughs> Greg the Gray and Ed the Creepy Granddaddy Mailman. Thank you so much, everybody. We appreciate it, as always. Uh, <laughs> If you want to give us some feedback, we are always looking for feedback. Uh, don't make Andy lonely. Give him give give him some like you know I don't know partner feedback. Let's do that. Uh, the broadcasters three at gmail dot com. We don't have any. We're 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 on a, a politics hiatus right now, so we need the fun questions, the fun links. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. JP, call on you. Yes. Everybody yes. else. Hit us up. The broadcasters three at gmail.com or 331 276 I think that's it. Anybody else have anything else? Uh, did we miss anything? Again, happy birthday to Brian and Mandy. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> happy birthday, dear Brian and Mandy. <laughs> 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 Yes. yes. May you all get the charcuterie board of the luncheon of your dreams for your birthday this year. <laughs> oh, one more announcement. Uh, if you're a patron, patron secret Santa, sign up has begun. Sign up by, na- by uh, Thanksgiving, the nighttime of Thanksgiving, midnight, uh, I think Eastern time, maybe Pacific. I forgot what time zone I said it for, but just sign up. It's going to be fun. Uh, be creative this year. We'll, we'll do our COVID creativity, Secret Santa. It's always really fun. So uh, make sure you check that out. Okay, on that note, everybody, if nobody else has anything, uh, my name is Colleen. My name is Amanda. And I'm Shandy. Peace out, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.